Hello students, now we're going to do some practice examples with alkene oxidation. But first, if you have not yet read the one page handout on uh, oxidation of alkenes, please pause the video and do that. The handout looks like this. It says something like oxidation of alkenes, alcoholic neighbors, or total cleavage. Spend a minute right now if you have not already read this one page handout on alkene oxidation and read that through now and then we'll work a couple of examples on the board. Okay, I'm assuming that you have uh, read this handout on alkene oxidation. Let's look at some examples. We know that there are two different flavors. Both of them involve the same oxidizing agent, potassium permanganate. I have the same alkene written up here twice. Let's take the first example, let's use some cold base. So with this one, we're going to use potassium permanganate, K, M, N, O, 4, and I'm going to use OH- minus to symbolize the fact that we're doing this one in base. I'm just going to write the word cold below the arrow. You might see, as in your practice, potassium permanganate sometimes also goes above or below the arrow. Remember our convention for that. Back in intro chem, sometimes we reserve the space above or below the arrow for catalysts. In organic chemistry, we're a little more loosey-goosey about that. In organic chemistry, above or below the arrow usually just means in the presence of. So it doesn't have to be a catalyst. In this particular case, uh, the hydroxide is catalytic, but this is actually uh, a reactant, right? So this is getting used up as the reaction proceeds. So in the presence of cold base, what happens to this? The double bond breaks, it gets oxidized, so this double bond is breaking, and we're adding alcohol groups. Unlike way back in the fall we did Markovnikov electrophilic addition, MEA, where we added water. The water broke the double bond and it only added one OH group. And alkene oxidation, we're actually adding two OH groups. Right, so pay attention, that's one important difference. The double bond breaks, and we're gonna add an OH here, and we're also gonna add an OH here, okay? These are neighboring alcohol groups. We sometimes refer to this as a vicinal diol. A vicinal diol, diol of course just means something with two alcohol groups. And vicinal means they're neighboring, they're right next to each other. You might remember uh, a couple of um, weeks ago we talked about uh, briefly a gem diol. A gem diol or geminal diol means twins. In a geminal diol, the OHs are on the same carbon, right? They're both twins. We're not going to work with that, right? If you see something like this, right, in the context of alkene oxidation, you did it wrong. Right, so no gem diols for us right now. We're only gonna have vicinal diols, okay? So this is what happens if you start with an alkene and you add cold potassium permanganate in base. If instead you wanna use the other flavor, this is the hot acid flavor. Again, it doesn't matter what you, one you write above the arrow or below, hot on top, acid on bottom. In that particular case, the hot potassium permanganate is going to basically rip this molecule in half, right? So it's going to take that double bond and just break both the pi bond and the sigma bond, right? And that's pretty unusual. And these carbons, the carbons that used to participate in the double bond, are going to be oxidized as far as they can go. Right, so let's look over here. For this little bit right here, we know this carbon is going to be oxidized as far as it can go. If you have a secondary carbon, right, what's the most oxidized it can get? The answer is you can oxidize it to a ketone, but you can't oxidize it any further than that. Right? You cannot make, for example, an acid an acid would be even more oxidized, but check out what's going on here. We would have five bonds. That's not going to work, right? So for a carbon that's already a secondary carbon, once this thing breaks off, that becomes a ketone. What about the other piece? If you look at these two carbons here, this 
This carbon is also going to be oxidized as far as it can go, but it's a primary carbon. If you have a primary carbon, what is the most oxidized it can be? This one actually can be oxidized all the way to the acid, right? So if you take an alkene, you have potassium permanganate and Han acid, you're going to rip that thing clean apart, and each of these carbons here and here are going to be oxidized, right, typically either to an acid, if it ends up being primary after it's ripped apart, or to the ketone if it's secondary after it's been ripped apart.